launch of the first human into space, Yuri Gagarin, uh, another being the first launch of the space shuttle. Uh, we have a video package that takes a look at that uh, first space shuttle mission known as STS-1. Uh, why don't we take a watch at that now? Yeah. Enter Shuttle. It's the first reusable space vehicle. Satellites may be placed in orbit and returned to Earth, or even repaired in orbit. For other With types of missions, the orbiter will carry in its payload bay Space Lab. A large manned space stations can be constructed in orbit. With the shuttle orbiters, we're entering a new era in space. T-minus one minute, FYC, go. CBH, oh, CAC, go. Who's failing, baby? I was standing on the moon when I heard that. I was really amazed. Uh, uh, you know, it was really interesting. I didn't know anything about the shuttle. We was working on Apollo, so I didn't I had no idea what kind of vehicle it'd be. Well, on April 1st, 1969, I got this phone call about 8:30 in the morning saying, "Go to Building 36," and and I saw the people I knew that were going into the building. So I went to go into the building and went up to the third floor and about 20 of us were just left standing there. We'd all received the same phone call. We had no idea why we were there. And a few minutes later, Dr. Max Fugier walked in and pulled out this funny looking balsa wood plane, flew it across the room and said, we're gonna build America's next spacecraft. It's gonna launch like a rocket, but it's gonna land like an airplane. It's gonna be reusable, shuttle, back and forth to low Earth orbit, which is how we named it. When you consider the range of velocities this vehicle had to fly, it would fly subsonic, transonic through Mach 1, supersonic, and then hypersonic. When you're coming in uh, from outer space, entry starts out at hypersonic velocities. The lifting body gave us the uh, best performance characteristics, best handling characteristics for acquiring a landing strip. One of the competing concepts was two lifting body. It was a huge, massive booster coupled with a smaller orbiter side mounted to the booster. They were both piloted vehicles. NASA quickly realized that this two lifting body configuration was prohibitive from fiscal point of view. And it was also very complicated. So that NASA embarked on a little bit different path. Take all the high value pieces of shuttle and make them reusable. And that's how we wound up with orbiter and main engines being reusable. And the lower value or less expensive pieces make them expendable. And that's why external tank became expendable. Another, another concept that uh, we had early on was deployable uh, jet engines. They would flop out of the fuselage somehow and, and turn on. Well, that meant that you had to carry jet fuel. And then they started saying, well, you know, you'd have to land even if the engines didn't work. Well, if I gotta land if the engines don't work anyway, maybe I just shouldn't carry the engines because they're such a problem. So then the problem became one of trying to get the orbiter from California to the Cape, and then after every mission to refurbish it and to fly it back and forth. And then after several weeks, I called up Owen one day and told him not to laugh, but I wanted to show him something. Stand right up there where we feel. It's the first uh, flight size orbiter we built was built to use in what we call the approach and landing test. And we wanted to air launch the orbiter from the back of the 747 at about 35,000 feet and fly it on the glide slope down to the runway. Well, the approach and landing tests actually proved to be very valuable to us because we found some things about the flight control system we wanted to adjust and change before we went to orbit. The 
valves on the RCS uh, on the shuttle weighed about half what they did on the Apollo. What we did, we borrowed a technique that Sears and Roebuck used on their washing machine valves to open and close the valves. The components coming together for the shuttle was uh, very interesting because it was the first time we were flying a reusable space vehicle. Reusable solid rocket boosters and a reusable orbiter. Mark Lunder with WCKTTV in Miami. Uh, one of you has been in space four times, uh, Mr. Young, and Commander Crippen, you haven't gone yet. To what extent have uh, you developed a sort of old pro and uh, rookie relationship so familiar to TV watchers? <laughs> I'm glad when he got picked, uh, fly with him because he knew the software so well. And I'll be darned, you know, the design wasn't frozen up in those days. And when he got picked, and I figured he'd handle the computers, and turned out they put the computer switches on my side. <laughs> It's quite different running thousands and thousands of computer simulations from seeing what you have worked on for 10 years out on the launch pad ready to launch. In the control center, uh, Neil Hutchinson was our flight director, and uh, I think nowadays they, they actually have pictures of the launch, but uh, you know that was uh, a no-no. I mean, everybody was going to be focused on their job a couple weeks before the launch. He said, gee, you know, maybe, uh, maybe we should have a cue card, and, uh, but uh, we went a little bit different. Uh, we, uh, we put them on a tie, and it's all our calls, and uh, we, we stenciled them on upside down. So all you had to do was pick up your tie like that, and you could uh, just read down. Uh, all the calls you had to make uh, you know, during ascent, but we thought it was just something to add a little lightness to the event. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, we've gone for main engine start. responsible for the separation of anything that separated on the shuttle. So certainly the boosters on first flight, you know, is up above watching in mission control. And so when they separated, I screamed. Roger on the set, Columbia. <laughs> oh, yes, it really did it. They came off. I'm standing. Here he is. We can confirm it. It's really not explainable, you know, when you dedicated so much of your life to uh, the development and design and it's come to fruition, uh, you know, it's like having a baby. It's, yeah, it's the best way I can say it. Columbia, Houston, uh, you guys did so good, we're going to let you stay up there for a couple of days. You're going for on orbit. Being the so-called rookie on this flight, I had a, a thrill from, from the moment of liftoff all the way up to what we're doing now. It's really been super. The spacecraft has worked as advertised all the way along. I think we've got something that's really going to mean something to the country and the world. Well, it's great, and everybody views it, I'm sure, just as the forerunner of great things to come. It truly was a unique, and is a unique machine, probably one of the greatest engineering feats that has been done, in, in, at least in space. It, it captured and a lot of satellites that, were mal that malfunctioned. It brought them back and took them back up again and launched them again. It has done over and over again a lot of great experiments in space. Well, it's a workhorse. If you stop and think about what the shuttle does, it can carry people to and from orbit, it can carry